meeting to order. This is our work session for really of July the 30th in preparation for our August the 3rd meeting, which will be our first meeting in, first meeting in August. And uh, we've got a couple things that we're going to do that are prior to looking at our agenda. And the first one is we have the pleasure of having Mr. Philip Carter with us. And he is the uh, head of the library now. And so he is going to make a presentation to us about what the library is doing um, in terms of their programming and the budget. So, Mr. Carter, the floor Absolutely. is all yours. I'm also going to pass out a few things. Yay, thank you. For y'all to. We have treats? Absolutely. Let's see, we'll find some good ones here. Thank you. And while he's doing that, I'm going to mention that uh, behind him, there is a trophy that everybody gets to have their picture made with at some point when they get ready to do so. This is a this is a treat. The university's been kind enough to uh, allow us to borrow it for about an hour, so we're gonna take advantage of it and enjoy. It. Um, so I am with the Stark Oxford County Public Library System. Uh, as y'all know, I'm giving those that don't, may not have my business card my business card. I have extras for anybody else as well. Um, so I came in, in in February of last year, just in time for, you know, things to go completely topsy-turvy on us. So since I've been here, um, we've made some pretty significant changes and some strides in the way we do some things, uh, the way we look at library service, uh, the way we look at the way the library looks. Um, I'm going to actually walk over here so I'm not behind everybody. Um, so if you haven't been to the library in a while, um, come in. But it looks a little different, and it's going to continue to look a whole lot different as the way we're starting to do some things. Uh, I like to think of us less as a place for books. I'm a bad librarian. I'm a terrible librarian, actually. Um, I don't know what's on the bestseller list. I don't know what the most recent John Grisham book is. I definitely don't know what the most recent James Patterson book is. Uh, he writes too many for me to keep up with. But I got into libraries because I'm into community and economic development. And libraries are one of the single best return on investment places that you can put your time, effort, and money in terms of return on investment. We're an educational institution. We're a leisure institution. We are a place that you can go and find information. We are actually probably the last place in American society that a person can go and exist without the expectation of buying anything. Um, now, I want people to start thinking of us, us as a partner organization. We're starting to partner with Parks and Rec. We're starting to partner, partner with Excel by 5. We're partnering with uh, MSU Extension Services. We're partnering with anyone who needs space, extra voices, um, a built-in audience. We want to be, I, I want to get our hands in everything that happens in the town of Stark. We want to be a part of every mundane and amazing event that happens in the city of Starkville. And we started that process by these partners. Uh, we're working with Parks and Rec to put up a permanent story walk at the new Cornerstone Park. A story walk is this really cool thing that was started a couple of years ago um, by a uh, librarian in the Northeast in which you set up displays, you take a children's book, you take the pages out of it, we'll get them printed very specifically, we're not going to store too many books, um, but you put the pages at stations you have kids walk to that station, read the book, and there's often some type of movement or physical activity involved with that station. And when they're done, they go to the next station, and so on and so forth. So they're getting out, they're moving, they're reading. It's a great way for families to get together and read to their kids instead of just sitting in a room and reading a book to them. It makes it more engaging. Um, we're working on lots of programs like that. We also want to change the way the library looks at the space we have. Uh, we're in the process of a grant that's going to put in a, com a computer lab instead of just computers for public use. Uh, we're putting in drop down screen, we're putting in a uh, sound system so that there can be classes, workshops, uh, teaching opportunities at the public library. Um, our, we're expanding our Friends of the Library Books and Authors event. It's going to be in the evenings. We're going to work on bringing in some even bigger authors. We're going to make it more accessible to people to get to those kinds of events. And we're also looking at the way we do our own fundraising. Um, uh, National Library Week is in April of every year. Next April, it's a terrible week to choose, but it is what was chosen. It is the week of thanks, uh, sorry, Easter. The week of Easter. It's a terrible week. But the Saturday before, we're having a ticketed fundraising event 
called The Great Gatsby. Uh, we're going to have wine and food and music in the library. You buy a ticket, and your ticket also gets you a wine pool. Local uh, liquor stores and other individuals are donating wine for a wine pool. You can pull a number, you win that bottle of wine that's associated with that number. You can buy more pools at the event. We're hoping to raise some money to do some bigger projects at the library. And that brings me to like the biggest point of talking about libraries, because you can't talk about libraries without talking about the funding on the libraries. So in, let alone, not just Mississippi, in the US, less than 2% of public funding goes to public libraries. Less than 2%. In the US, 67% of Americans use the public libraries. Tell me anywhere else that 2% of funding goes that two-thirds of your people use it. Um, just in the last two months, we've had almost 5,000 children attend programming at the library. Just in the last two months for summer reading. And that's with everything else that's going on. We're still not back to our usual attendance or visit numbers at the library yet. And probably won't be still for another couple of years, I'll be really honest. Um, we are the one place that everyone has access to. I talk to people all the time. Typically, people who use our book services, we'll talk about those, are those that can't afford to buy books themselves. Whenever I talk to people who can't afford to buy books themselves, I ask them, why are you buying books? We have. Come get them from us. Because we save literally, I don't have the full numbers for Octavio High County since I got here, because it's been a different year. But on average, at my previous library system, with a similar circulation number, we save the people of that county around $9 million a year in providing books rather than buying books. Um, and that's money that they can use for other things in the county. So having said that, we'll talk about funding levels. Um, City of Starkville, y'all have been incre incredibly uh, supportive of the library, um, but this year we are asking for more um, from both city and county. Uh, about 70% or more, it differs year to year, of our funding comes from local sources, comes from city and county sources. The state provides a little bit in forms of some personnel grants that we get. Uh, they pay for our insurance so that all of our staff can have health and, health and life insurance. Um, we get a little bit of federal funding, but the majority of it is at the city and county level. And currently we sit uh, about 41st out of 52 library systems for local funding. You'll be seeing those numbers in a packet real soon, uh, if you haven't already. Um, we're funded at about, I don't have the number in my head, but we're funded at about $8 per capita. The state average is about 14 locally. Um, so we want to do more. We want to be even more involved in educating and giving activity opportunities to the children, the teens, and the adults of, of Octavia County and Starkville. But we can't do it without more support, and, and we really need it. We're understaffed currently by four full-time positions by the base state accreditation standard. We're full four, four full-time positions short. Um, I'm hoping to start filling those, because I'm tired of wearing so many hats, because there's some things I can't get done, because I have to do things like um, payroll, which I have to go back and do today, because my staff will like me if I pay them today, um, get their payroll done. Um, so that's where we are. I'm here to entertain any questions. Um, you're going to see some numbers uh, it, when, you, when you do get the packet from me. A number that is not included in there is some money that y'all set aside for maintenance expenses. When we report our operating budget to the federal government and to the state government, that money doesn't count as the way we report, so you won't see that money included. But there is about $20,000 set aside for maintenance expenses that we greatly appreciate to keep the building in shape and get it back into shape. But that money you won't see reflected just because that's not a number we legally report for our reports. Um, but I'm here for any questions, if anybody has them. Anybody, anybody have any questions? Oh, I'll ask a quick question. Sure. You know, my, my dream is to someday have a new library building. And um, I, I don't say that lightly because it's not an inexpensive um, project, but, but our building is, 60 years old or older? They're about. Yeah. I think it was completed in 62 or 63. Okay, so, so it's so it's right there. It's it's, it's it about 60 years old and was designed for storage of books for the most part. 
and things, as, as you've noted, things have changed. Y'all are doing a lot of things outside, I've noticed, down at Fire Station Park um, and going out into the community with things. So um, I, I hope everybody will keep that in mind as a, a, a dream, dream project to, to have a newer, better library, whether it's expanding what we've got um, and trying to figure out what to do as far as parking or whether it's building a new library as an anchor in some other part of town. Um, still in that downtown area that's accessible to everybody um, sure. is it's it's just something I'd like for us to to keep in the back of my, our mind it's it, it really does have a huge impact on, on community and I think you're right that we need to think of the library as far more than just books um, it's a community center absolutely uh, in Lamar County where I was prior to here um, they had just completed and were quite proud of these uh, senior uh, senior recreation centers they had just built. I really wish I'd been there before they built them because I would have asked them why. Why are you spending money to build these, I don't know how many they had, three, four, five of them across the county. Why are you building those when you already have libraries that can serve that purpose? So now you've got a building that's getting used once every two weeks for senior leisure activities when they could have come to our libraries and you wouldn't have had to have a build, new building. You could have just put that money into helping fund the library to be part of this. And it would have saved the money. It would have been cheaper. You would have saved a ton of construction costs. Um, but again, some of these programs that we're doing outside is simply because we don't have the room to do them indoors. Um, and some of it was, you know, COVID safety and some other, some other protocols we wanted to follow. But if you've seen the pictures in the paper, we have an incredible children's librarian. She does some pretty incredible programming. And we can't have them in the children's room because they're too big. We have too many people to fit them in the children's room. If we put them in the children's room, it would be shoulder to shoulder. And there'd be no space to do anything. Uh, we have no dedicated meeting room. We have no dedicated computer lab. We're going to have a computer lab, but it's just going to be next to the circulation desk because that's the space we have. Um, and now libraries do so much more. 3D printing, digital media creation labs, uh, which we're working on. We're going to have a lab where patrons can come in, they can record a podcast, they can record YouTube videos, they can learn how to do those things. We're going to help them show them how to get it out there in the world if they want to put them out there. We're doing it. Um, 3D printing is a technology that was seen as a novelty 10 years ago. Now we're seeing houses built by 3D printers that 3D print with concrete. They're part of every industry. Uh, drone technology is another technology we're going to hopefully write a grant to get into and start teaching kids and young adults how to use drones, how to get into that field and get into that, touch, put their hands on a technology that is quickly becoming a part of every field. Okay, so that leaves me to ask a question because I think that's something the school system is doing. So are y'all partnering with the school we, system absolutely. for that kind of activity? We will. So one of the difficulties, and I, I encountered this in Lamar County when we started to do this, is that it's great that the school systems have it, but there's also a lot of homeschool students who have no access to those resources. So what I like to do, if I'm able to do, I like to partner with the school districts to find out the technology they're using, and we're going to mimic their technology to the best we can. That's twofold. That means that the homeschool students who aren't in the school district don't get their hands on this technology. They get a chance to do the same thing that the kids that are in the school district can use, and then if those kids later go into the school district, They've already got experience. They're not maybe as far behind as they would have been as the students that are in there. But two, it means the school kids that are in the school district using this technology, they can leave, come to the library, and get more hands-on experience with the exact same technology they're used to using. Okay. Um, so that's what we want to do. We want to not duplicate. We want to supplement. We want to make it accessible to everything. Philip, until you get your funding and stand up a 3D printing program. I've got six or eight of them at the idea shop and any faith-based homeschool, public, private school kid can come in there. We can coordinate that with you and, and happy to have them as part of our mission. So and your staff, when I came here initially before we had to shut down and the world changed, I was in communications with them. They had already said we would be happy to come down and do programs and demonstrations Good. and help educate these kids how to use which is going to be great because I don't have staff who are experts on 3D printing or any of that kind of well, stuff. Well, and we can do little robot building things. We've done that with Brookfire and some others. So uh, you and I can have a conversation about how we can help you until you get where you want to be. Absolutely. Uh, I have, do have one last question on tracking. You said your attendance is not what it was. Correct. I understand ramping back up. I didn't know that we were keeping much in the way of attendance or tracking prior to you. So prior to me, 
they had just started to take it more seriously. I'm going to be really honest, we've had to report these statistics for as long as at least I've been alive. And I'm 40 years old. So these numbers are supposed to have been tracked very accurately, and they've been, to be honest, guesswork for a whole lot of years. Uh, well, we have door trackers. We can track people in and out of doors, which is an imperfect science, but that's the best, you know, best we got without dedicating someone to counting and verifying who people are exactly with a clicker. Uh, we count computer usage, we count program attendance, we count circulation, we look at all of, we count the number of reference questions that we field in a year. Okay. We try to track everything. Now prior to me getting here, they got the door counters the October before I got here. We averaged for those four or so months of full activity, we averaged 10 to 15,000. So we, we saw 10 to 15,000 visits a month. We're seeing right now we're seeing more like five to 6,000 visits a month. Okay. Um, and a lot of that's gone months. online so that may not ever come back? I think Question a lot mark. of it is people being cautious. Okay. I don't think it's all gone online, although we do offer uh, digital books. We offer a lot of services uh, online. We'd like to expand those offerings too because those are just as valid and just as important to supply. One of the things I did when I got here, I got us a subscription to a book service called Tumble Books. It's an incredible ebook service. Excuse me. We pay a flat fee a year. It's not a cheap fee, but it's a flat fee. Uh, and anyone with a library card can access these ebooks. And the best part is they're kids' books. They have kids' books, they have YA books, and they have education specific books specifically. They've got a whole section for math. And not only can they check out that book, but that book comes with a questions and teaching guide for it. So homeschool parents can teach their kids math through this or teach them different things that they're reading. But the biggest thing is teachers get to use it. I discovered that teachers in our school district were paying for their own subscriptions at a clip of about $800 a subscription. Okay. Instead, it costs us about $4,000 a year for everyone to be able to access it. So the e-offerings like that are things that we're trying to. We, we want to be that gateway. We, there's a lot of things that we can be just the connecting point for a lot of different people and agencies in town, and we're working to be that. Awesome. You have digital audiobooks. We do have digital audiobooks. We used to have Hoopla. Um, unfortunately, I don't like Hoopla's pricing model. Hoopla is a per use pricing model. Um, and in fiscal year 2020, so last year, we had exhausted our entire yearly budget for it in the first four months. So unfortunately, that was just not something we could continue to foot the bill for. We switched to a model with a company called Overdrive. They have an app called Libby. Um, and where instead of having a huge assortment of things to choose from, we buy specific titles. So unfortunately, the selection is not as big, but it's usually more popular materials. And so, and we always take suggestions. So if anybody wants anything, we can get it. All right, thank you. Any other questions at all? No. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. No problem. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave a couple. I'm not going to leave these whole bags, but I'll leave them in the back so that y'all can continue. Um, I'll leave them by the championship trophy. How about that? Okay. Um, I've got some, some decals if y'all feel inclined to put them on your vehicle or on windows or something like that. Um, I got some logos made because we're a baseball town. I don't care what anybody says. I got these made actually before we even won a national championship. So a baseball style logo of the Starkville Public Library. Um, our read sign that's located outside the library, which I am in the process of getting relit. I do know that lights are out and some people have talked about that. Unfortunately, the weather has pushed back that landscaping work that's going to get done to relight those. Um, and I've got some for our children librarian story time, Miss Randy's story time. So I'm going to leave those back there. Please take some. Uh, if you don't want to put them on your car, give them to someone that you know is a library supporter, because I already know several people in this room are library supporters so, and okay. users. So Thank I so appreciate y'all's time so much. And if y'all have any questions, you have my contact info. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right. Um, and next we have a report on the engineering space, and Nav and uh, Edward have been working together on that. I see Nav's is the only name on here, so I'm going to put him on the spot, <laughs> and we'll let Edward kind of bring yeah, up the rear as he wishes to do. Well, so. thanks, board, for allowing us to give you an update. I'm going to pass out some things for you guys to look at while we talk through it. And I'll start off, Edward, if that's okay. We're growing as a city. We we're bringing in more employees, and so we're running out of space here at City Hall for offices for some of our staff. And so what we're going to, what we have in the process of doing is utilizing some of the space in the retail space that's back there in the back. 
Um, we're calling it the engineering studio build out. Um, and so Evan and I are just going to just walk through and kind of show you, talk about this plan that we have, where we are in the process, um, and then the mayor and I are going to talk and work through of moving some of the other offices around, just the way we can create a good space for everybody, um, make sure people got spaces to work. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you, uh, so just generally speaking, we're, we're uh, proposing to take essentially about the eastern half of the retail space uh, or so it turned into a, just an open studio type concept um, right now uh, we have employees that are segmented all over really the second floor of city hall and we just hired a new employee that's going to help manage all the parts capital projects and they haven't started yet but when they start there's nowhere for them to really sit so uh, like that said we're growing um, we're, we're trying to create this space that is uh, going to be more friendly for us to collaborate together, to network together, communicate better. These are just some examples. Um, it's really a studio concept, uh, which is maybe an old term. A lot of people now call it like a no work type space, um, where you're really kind of sharing common elements, and there's a kind of a close proximity that's really going to encourage that collaboration and communication. Um, so that's kind of really the vision for it. You have a, a copy uh, on your um, proposal there for the layout um, that shows uh, really five open workspaces, an office, um, a storage area for filing system, and then just really the remainder would be just real common uh, elements with a large conference work table um, with move the plotter in there that's kind of used throughout the, the entire building. So uh, we really feel like this is going to benefit the department, um, really provide us um, one extra space for the future, uh, whether that be an intern or uh, just a, a, a workstation if somebody needs to come in and work at City Hall for a period of time. Um, to, you know, get that to do. So that's, that's generally it in a nutshell, and um, be happy to answer any questions about it. Well, when we're done, y'all can go, you know, see they've got some, some progress being made on it but you can go back there and check it out and I will, take a look one at it. thing mentioned is the, the great thing about the studio space is generally it's very open and so uh, there's really the, the cost of that is significantly less than like a traditional office uh, type build out so. well, no, two, that one, my second question what it called and my first question will be are you going to be up there or are you going to be in your same office I, i'm going to be there yes sir. okay so yeah, we'll we're going to turn this office into a what well, that's what Nav and I are going to work on as we uh, get together to move move people around. When we get the new HR person, Nav's going to move up here. So um, we've got the building department and our. Uh, hopefully, when we get a new assistant city planner, you know that was apparently I wasn't here for it, but that was apparently originally a closet that Emily was working out of, and so we'll we'll work <coughs> through how we're going to structure that. You say the cost not too expensive. No, sir. It's it's um. Right now we have it budgeted for twenty-eight thousand, um, and looking like it's going to come under that. And we've been—they've been doing the work themselves. So Emmanuel has been really good. He's been hammering and sawing and making noise. <laughs> but yeah, we—they've been doing the work themselves. So it's been—it's uh, been very good. It's nice to have people who know buildings, who have building skills, and understand all that. So. So as of now, how many, how many employees going to be there other than you? Right now we have uh, myself, Coach cool. Burnett, um, Mr. Skelton, who's our CAD technician. We have our engineering inspector that's shared with utilities, but they're housed here. They have a small workspace where they can come in and do their reporting. Um, and then our new uh, engineer for parks, which is Ms. Mary Williams, um, who's starting next, well, next month in August. Um, that'll be, uh, she'll be in that space too. So there's a total of six spaces in this so Cody won't stay where he is. No, everybody, all the engineers. All staff, engineers. Everybody would go there together. One stop shop. One stop shop. One stop shop. Okay. And, uh, and the plan right now is that the, the door that kind of goes into that retail space will be removed, so it'll almost be an extension of that hallway, just really open to allow for flow. Okay. Good. Okay. Yes. Sound good. Okay. All right. Well, I wanted to make sure that if anybody walked through that door, they went. What's going on back here? We'll make sure everybody knew, knew about it and knew the plan. So, 
All right, so we will now go into our uh, into our agenda, and we have uh, two sets of minutes. Mr. Latimer, have you looked at those? Yes, ma'am. You have? Yes, ma'am. Right. about that? Awesome. Anything about them that we need to be alerted to before they be considered for consent? No, I just made some word corrections and, and have gotten those to Lisa, and she'll implement if she hadn't already, so we're good to go. Okay, all right. Consent, everyone, for the two sets of minutes? Yes, Okay. Um, and I will finally make the appropriate timing for the National Night Out on Crime this time around. <laughs> and it will be from 6 to 9 on the same night that we're doing this. So after we're done with our board meeting, if we want to, I'm sure the chief would appreciate a stop by to, to say hi to folks. Um, anybody have any idea of comments that they want to make that they want to have on the, and we, and we aren't going to be doing new employee introductions, by the way, so that needs to be scratched off. Um, I'm hoping to get some information <coughs> from the Humane Society about some national publicity that's going to be happening for oh, them. Okay. They're going to be featured in um, the ASP, ASC, ASC, ASPCA, whatever, that one, yes. and um, an, another national magazine, I think Time Magazine, but I'm wow. not, I'm not I don't, don't hold me to that, I can't okay. remember, but um, they, they have some people coming to town next week. To, okay. to talk about them. Cool. So. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, put down something. We'll see what OCHS. OCHS. Yep. Pub got it. Publications. Okay. Um, we will have our usual citizen comments and public appearance. John Bateman, who is the outgoing, he's he, as we I think probably everybody knows he is uh, taking a no he hasn't taken a job he is going to a uh, school in Chicago and they're in the search for a new executive director but he won't be leaving for another I think a uh, couple of weeks and so he's going to come make a presentation to the start about the Starkville Area Arts Council um, and their plans for the coming year while we while he's still accessible to them so um, we have three public hearings we have our public hearing on the wall sign requirements this is uh, Tyler restaurant Tyler is um, looking to do a uh, a sign on the side of their building there where they've got one now and then they're also looking to do a mural later on that falls under art but this one is signage and Daniel anything about that one in particular we've got that uh, that variance it's just a dimensional variance the board adjustment deals on Wednesday right okay all right um, so we will be having a public hearing on that one uh, next public hearing which is nothing that we can consider for consent the next one is the declaration of uh, building 10 this has been coming our way and all of the um, necessary documentation mr. Latimer you've been looking at that as it's been submitted by officer Perez even as we speak yes ma'am okay good. all right and chief you're good you're good with that okay um, so that was that will be we've got right now building four five and eight and then this will be building 10 going through the same process now I need to recuse myself from that Oh yes, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Okay, all right, so noted, and just remind remind me if you would please. And then we've got the second public hearing on the on the e-scooter ordinance. Uh, I think you got an email from Mr. Latimer about the uh, e-scooters, and this is this is just simply the, in my opinion, we had we had obligated ourselves to a second public hearing. I don't know that we've got someone who is uh, wanting to push forward with an ordinance as such. Um, if you do, speak now. Um, if not, then we will have that second public hearing, allow the public to, to meet that expectation of having set one, yeah, and uh, then we can move forward from there. But there is, there, other than that, there is nothing for us to consider as it relates to that right now. Okay. All right. Good deal. Uh, under the mayor's business, this is our monthly, uh, once a month uh, proclamation of the local emergency. And I have, I inquired it while we were in MML if that was something we needed to continue to do, and was told uh, out of an abundance of caution it probably should be. So it's a no harm, no foul. So uh, if put that consent. put that one on consent. All right, thank you. And then we've got consideration of calling for public hearing for the budget and tax levy for the city of Starkville. And obviously this is something we are required by law to do. And so consent for that. Yes. Okay. Uh, on the airport, uh, Chris, I believe, actually Rodney, I do see you here. Um, Mr. Lincoln is here, and this is consideration of a flight school's operation agreement. It's just a template, right? Okay. Mr. Latimer, you're good with that? I am. Okay. No issues? No, Ms. Consent for that one? All right. Under community development, we've got an encroachment agreement with a residential sign, and we've had those in several places around the community. Um, uh, Mr. Havilland, anything about that one? that? This, this district standard one is in the median located at the entrance. Real similar when the court goes through, court and 
Okay. And it was uh, um, it was looked at by was it looked at by anybody one of the boards, or is this just straight come straight to the board? Just, just come straight. Come straight to the board. Okay. Any any issues with that? Yeah. You want to put that on consent? Consent. Okay. Uh, and this is these are reappointments. They're the sole applicants. Put those on consent for the Historic Preservation Commission. Mm -hmm. Consent. And, okay, thank you. And then we have a certificate of appropriateness. And Daniel, would you, would you be so kind as to give us uh, the highlights of that? Some applicants are uh, 14, 14 Greensboro Street. They're just wanting to replace a fence. They're wanting to do some work on the floor of their porch. Mm -hmm. and replace the light fixture. Okay, and HPC was good with that? Yeah, they uh, managed the revenue. Okay, so consent for that one? Okay. Um, under engineering, we have a board order for Pleasant Acres Bridge repl replacement. Edward, you want to give the board just a brief rundown on the Pleasant Acres Bridge yeah, sure history, is. please? Well, it's a, it's a bridge that uh, we, we've been doing some research. We think it's around 60 or 70 years old. Uh, when it was originally built, that neighborhood was in the county. So um, uh, it, it, it's the main drainage way that, that kind of goes uh, east to west. And, and over time, there's been a significant amount of development to the east that's occurred. Um, so that bridge is not only very antiquated, but, but undersized as well. Um, it is right now uh, rated at five ton load rating, which is extremely low. Um, so really it's only, only allowed by law for uh, like passenger vehicles, uh, no school buses, no garbage trucks, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, as of about a year ago, uh, well, let me back up. Uh, Two years ago, three years ago, we applied for this bridge to be in the initial round of the Mercy Road Bridge funding, and it was one of the three that was not approved um, to to uh, to be replaced. So this application is to they they've opened another round of funding for that. Um, the only small thing that's changed between then and now is about a year ago the county uh, took it off their bridge inventory, which um, basically puts the full onus and responsibility on the city. Uh, for long-term maintenance of that. So our proposal right now, we're working through that, is to replace that bridge with a double box culvert. We'll take it off the bridge inventory for good, and that would last us at least another 60 or 70 years. Well, again, it was one of those things that we were surprised to find that uh, it was no longer qualifying for a bridge by about an inch. So we are at 19 something, and the bridge has to be 20 feet in order to be considered a bridge. So. And we've used MDOT to ascertain that or to establish that that is actually the case. So we are where we are, and now we need to go forward and see if we can get some funding to, uh, to make that necessary change. So. So, so you're hoping it qualifies under the road component we as opposed are, to the and, bridge and, component? And I read through the application, um, and, and it, it allows for more than just a quote bridge. Okay. So um, depending on how you want to define it, we, I would still say it's a it's up for interpretation, and, and I think that the, the language allows for it. Uh, but the applications are due the second week of August, um, so we'll be putting those together next week. But one of the things that's required is more of Okay. Uh, consent on that? Consent. Okay. Thank you. Next is consideration of a low quote for Hollywood Drive drainage. Anything special about this, Edward? This is uh, been through Hollywood Drive at the, at the end where the movie theater is. It's just a perpetual state of very bad and it's a result of uh, just the lack of drainage infrastructure that was installed when that road was built. You have a lot of off-site drainage coming from the south, southeast from the, the tire area, and it just basically drains across that, uh, the top of the pavement, and it's just deteriorated over time. We want to um, collect all that drainage and, and route it underground, so we, when we repair that roadway, it will be done in a, a way that will last us a long Right in there, what that roundabout is. Yes, sir. Any issue with consent on that one? Consent. All right, thank you. Next one is declaring drainage pipe as surplus and auction on Gov deals. That's a consent. <laughs> Claims docket is not eligible for consent. Uh, human re is not normally. Uh, human resources, all right. <laughs> now, pronoun pronunciations of various names here. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Is that Wajno? Wajno? Wajno. Okay. All right. So we have a certified police officer, firefighters. We have a, a payroll clerk, a uh, part time <coughs> receptionist, and um, then we have maintenance workers. So if we could get consent on so, those. All right. Thank you. 
And then we have authorization to advertise for a lead landscape worker, which we need. So consent on that. All right. And then IT. Joel, you want to speak to the, the uh, cloud access software? Yes, ma'am. This is access control for the building. Uh, right now, it's something we've looked at a couple times for this building. It has the traditional key and burial system right now. Uh, now we've uh, decided that the time is right to proceed with this. So we got two quotes, and we're choosing to go with the, the less of two quotes. Um, local company uh, Security Solutions is going to provide this for us. And so this will give us key card or key fob access to the building. Uh, so if, if a fob or card is lost or misplaced, we can just deactivate that. We don't have to worry about rebarreling or a key being out there in the wild. It also gives us some reporting on comings and goings when, when the door was accessed. It also allows us to um, unlock the doors on schedule. So at 8 o'clock, those doors will be unlocked. It's a magnetic lock that just Unlocks automatically and locks automatically. Too. Great. Okay. I think this is wonderful. Um, do we know when we'll be able to get it done? Uh, I spoke with the vendor and they said as soon as it's approved, they should be uh, ready to roll very quickly. So I imagine within a month or so we'd have that okay. up and run. Super. All right. Consent on that? Okay. Um, then we have utilities department. This is a release of an overhead utility easement related to Vista. Uh, Terry, do you want to? Fill the board a little bit. This was something that we agreed to years back, and we just never actually uh, clarified. I think the right word, Chris, and so we transferred that overhead to underground, and this was just cleaning up the site for that easement. Okay. All right. Thank you. Consent for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, last but not least, we have the lowest quote from Ferguson for Longview Road project. This is old uh, Bluefield uh, water. Supply, this is their lines from long ago and far away when we took over Bluefield. So this is to create the uh, access for, for Longview Road to go through and to move the water lines. Is that correct, Terry? That's correct. This okay. shifts our line off of a state aid project off of the right of way. Fine. So consent for that? Consent. All right. And that takes us to executive session, which we will have, um, and we will deal with that on Tuesday evening. So absent anything else, I have anything else? Anything else we want to talk about? No? Okay. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate it. Y'all have a great weekend. And uh, we have a nice trophy back here that people can enjoy. So, thank you.